Well, hello everyone, and uh, welcome again to a PV Tech Tech Talk webinar. Uh, today, we will be uh, working with Jinko Solar, and the uh, Tech Talk uh, series means that this is much more technically driven uh, analysis. And the topic here today is what is the impact of Tiger Pro modules on the LCOE of utility scale projects? Uh, we have uh, three speakers all focused uh, on this topic and it's been driven really by uh, Jinko's launch of their Tiger Pro utility scale module recently which had huge success uh, with the webinar that we hosted and this is really to bring together experts that uh, have done analysis on this for, for uh, large-scale projects and I don't think this has been done anywhere else. And uh, so I'm really pleased that we've been able to have these people come together in such a short period of time. Uh, our three presenters today uh, are uh, going to be uh, Roberto Mergiani. He's the head of technical service and product management for Jinko Solar Europe. He will be followed by Hector Sanchez, who is the sales vice president for Europe and the Middle East uh, with Soltech. And our final guest speaker will be Ryan Zhao. He's the general manager of PV Power Plant and Wind Energy for Tuv Nord in China. Uh, as with uh, our Tech Talk series, uh, we will have time for around 15 minutes of Q&A at the end. And uh, this will be open to questions uh, throughout the webinar. So put your questions in. Uh, we do have people from uh, Jinko Solar that can help with some, uh, some of the questions. And indeed, we tend to get a lot of questions. So only a few of those can we pick out at the end. Uh, so that said, uh, our first speaker uh, is uh, Roberto. Uh, Roberto, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mark. It's indeed our pleasure to be here to deliver this uh, important webinar with such important topics and today as a Jinko Solar we are going to show what is the real impact of the new technology of Tiger Pro in terms of LCOE specifically for utility scale projects. So starting from the product itself what what is going to be the new features what is going to change well in front of us we have the two the two new products which are the tiger pro 72 tr on your left and the tiger pro 78 cells tr on your right side as you can see in 2018 in the red block we launched our cheetah technology which was were up to 410 watt peak. Uh, it was a 72 cell technology and it is still now our mainstream. Right now we are launching the Tiger series and the Tiger Pro series. The first series, the Tiger Pro on the blue block is the one studied for distribution market. Specifically for utility scale, we studied and developed a product which is really standard and um, uh, let's say uh, perfectly fitting with the mounting structure or inverter for large scale projects. What is going to change basically? First of all, the dimensions. As you can see, the 72 cell, which is up to 535 watt peak is larger definitely larger we have an area which is 25 26 percent bigger than cheetah which is an important output to consider when we are designing a large scale plant on the right side of course we have another version which is even bigger uh, the 78 cell which is mainly for again, utility scale projects, but it has a different approach in terms of mounting structure. We will check it later. Going through the technology itself, what we have changed is basically everything from the cell perspective. 
Right now, applying the tilling ribbon technology, we eliminate the cell gap and we increase the efficiency. We basically remove the passive area between the cell, the common white area. Now we developed a new concept and structure where we use a circular ribbon between the cells and there is a small overlap in order to eliminate the gap that I just mentioned. I confirm this technology, we have multi bus bar technology in order to decrease the losses and the thermal effect internally. And we confirm the half cell technology, which improves the shading tolerance, reduce the level of the current circulating and increase the, co the thermal coefficient effect. This is very important because those are our key feature in order to increase the energy yield of your plant. We will check in details later. Specifically speaking about SCOE, today we are going to touch every kind of aspect in order to understand why this model and why this technology is going to affect dramatically the LCOE. In principle, uh, by using Tiger Pro technology, we are going to save in terms of BOS from many uh, parts of, of the design. So let's just think about tracker cost, foundation cost, the site clearance, and uh, all around the DC architecture and all the model technology innovation are going to affect all your electrical parameters that you are going to use for your design. So the, um, the fact that using this technology is going to affect dramatically from the beginning your design, your savings, your surface that you are going to use for your PV plants, basically. And in any case, it's going to have a huge impact from every perspective. Then we will touch also, of course, the advanced warranty that we can offer and the highest compatibility that this model has with tracker manufacturers, with inverters, and of course, central and string inverters, which is very important right now. So in terms of impacting the LCOE, we can, let's say, have two different specs. One is the one driven by the rated power, the cell technology, the efficiency, and the electrical parameters. The first four parameters are going to change the product, the project design, meaning they are going to change the BOS cost, the total cost of every component but the modules. This is very important because by increasing the power density, the efficiency of the model, we are going to reduce the land area. We are going to reduce the amount of mounting structure that we are going to install. And on the other hand, there are some specific parameters like temperature coefficients, warranties, and that are going to change the energy yield plus the reliability of your system. All these kind of aspects are going to play a big role on your final LCOE. Specifically speaking about energy yield, it's very important to highlight how we increase the low irradiance performances. If we check the model of the diode inside of the module, we know that by increasing the reflection of the tire, and also the model resistance series, as you can see in the graph here, compared to the Cheetah 5 bus bars, we know that we can increase our low irradiance performances. And checking in details the different conditions between Cheetah 5 bus bars technology and Tiger technology, we can immediately realize where in every conditions, between 200 watt per meter square, 400 watt per meter square, 600 and 800 watt per meter square, the Tiger technology is performing slightly better, around 1% more. 
which means at the end of the day, in your simulation, you will gather more energy on every condition, starting from the low efficiency at 200 watt meter square. This is, of course, a key factor when you're going to calculate QLCUE. Nevertheless, it's very important to highlight that the final energy yield is a result from different um, inputs that we can have on our simulation in PVC. One of the most important factors is the behavior of the module at the different temperature of the environment that you are checking and located. So one is the temperature. The other one is, sorry, the temperature coefficient, of course. The other one is the IAM data. And the other one is, for, of course, the low irradiance performances, which allows you to increase the final performance ratio for your plant. By checking the table of the low irradiance, depending on the angle, we can see that the response of the panel has been improved compared to cheetah technology. And of course, even the thermal, the temperature coefficient is below 0.35%. Here we see um, that is minus 0.34, and it's a, it's a very good achievement in terms of uh, temperature coefficient. By doing the simulation, of course, the, the key and final report is the, um, the mirror of your studies. And uh, the final results are totally clear and very well explained here in one of the slides that the, the, the PVC simulation provides to you when you finalize the design. By checking the temperature loss, we see that we improved them compared to cheetah on the right side. We also increased the low irradiance performance by 1%. We can see here the efficiency at STC conditions and the final array nominal energy at this level. That's very important to notice. On the other hand, of course, even the losses uh, provided by the angle incidence are less. So these are clear facts and results that are provided by Tiger technology or you, on your final simulation design. And the final and most important result is definitely the more energy generation. We have run different tests in uh, China comparing Cheetah technology normal five bar bus bar technology with Tiger technology. And we calculated an average between 1.5 and 2% energy more, thanks to the multi bus bar technology, Tiger and Outcell. This mix of technology allows you to increase your energy yield with an average of 1.5%, which is very important, again, by calculating the final energy yield for your investment prospective and LCOE calculation. By reading the graph, we see that during the timeline, at every condition and every part of the season, target technology performed better. Again, mainly thanks to the low irradiance performances and the temperature coefficient, which is a big improvement in the market. One important aspect is not only the energy or the BOS savings that we can provide with this technology, thanks to the efficiency and the power density, but it's also the reliability, the trustability of the model itself, because we know that O and M costs are also a big part on our LCO calculation in our lifetime of the DB plant. With TR technology, we tested <coughs> different uh, IEC conditions uh, for PAD, thermal cycle, and mechanical tests. And for all the tests, we reached better values, which is very important because in terms of reliability, we achieved a better level 
it's a next step. That's, of course, in terms of quality and reliability, in terms of performances, it's a, it's a good advantage from the investor point of view. And the final result of having a um, more reliable product is definitely the advanced warranty in terms of performances we can offer to the final customer. We have the gray area, the green area, respectively, for monofacial and bifacial. The most important advantage uh, between Cheetah technology and Tiger is that we can reduce the first year degradation from 2.5 to 2%, which is equal for monofacial and bifacial. Regarding the annual degradation, we see that we have 0.55% for monofacial. And indeed, we have even a better coefficient for bifacial, which is 0 0.45. And we can guarantee this value either for transparent bake sheet and glass glass um, product, which is really important. So we can offer both options with the same advanced warranty conditions. And uh, well, let's run some simulations then let's try to understand what is the real difference between cheetah technology tiger and tiger pro i mean we, we can start of course comparing the cheetah tiger and tiger pro let's focus right now for utility scale projects on tiger pro the green block which is very important to understand the huge impact we can have in a big plant let's take an example in Australia, where we studied a 164 megawatt peak inland project. We designed in the same location with Tiger, with, Tiger, with Tiger Pro, and with Cheetah. So we just um, remove and design again the same plot, but with a different module. Designing with Cheetah, power class 405, we can create number modules in one string like 28. With Tiger Pro, even if we are increasing the power output to 530, we can keep the same number model in one string. This is very important because we can create the same strings, but definitely we will have a quantity of strings which will be different. How much is this difference? In this case, we have minus 23%, more or less, which has a huge impact in your design, in your cost from the BOS perspective. If we calculate it from the tracker's perspective, we are going to reduce minus 7.5% the cost from this component. Why? Because mainly with Zagger Pro, by increasing the efficiency and the power density, we are going to reduce dramatically the number of the strings the size of the surface that we are going to use. In this case, we are speaking almost the 25%, which, is, which has a huge impact from the cable cost perspective, DC cables from the DCC box, from the, um, of course, mountain that you are considering in your design. And if we proceed and check carefully the length saving cost in this case in australia we can achieve between cheetah and tiger pro a difference in land area which is quite important specifically also in terms of cost which is almost four percent less of course i mean this is also um, a value that should be considered country by country because as we know japan netherlands or spain they have different costs for the land but still you have to consider that the land area will be extremely less by powering up the model to 530 and increasing almost one percent efficiency if it drives uh, how our our attention now to the power generation specifically to the energy generation and we check the difference between cheetah tiger and tiger pro we see that we can increase our energy production in the total of 25 years or maybe 
we can consider even 30 for 30 years, but in this case for monofacial, it's more than 1.3%. So the results are calculated with, with PVCs and with a third party pump file provided by a third laboratory. This can provide reliability in calculations and simulations. That's very important to highlight. And if we check the final products that can reduce the LCOE, the Tiger Pro is obviously the winner. If we check the total investment and we apply our design and our BOS costs to the financial model, we calculate the total investment, the total equity you need for this investment. Those numbers are going to change dramatically in your business plan. The final result, result is that obviously LCOE will be reduced and in this specific case is going to be minus 5%, which is, uh, for in, in, in my opinion, it has a huge impact in, in your choice when you are going to select your model for your PV plant, which technology, why? Well, we, we are providing answer right now. Your equity will increase by almost 7% by using uh, uh, our Tiger technology. And that's finally the results that we are, let's say, uh, following and targeting in our R&D department. In the recent five years, we started with implementing high efficiency monoperc technology in order to improve the efficiency and the performances of our motors. And we started by decreasing the LCOE of 2%. Then three, four years ago, we applied step-by-step -step the half cut cell technology, reducing the internal losses and the shading effect as a final result of reducing LCOE by 1.5%. As now, we are now launching the tilling ribbon technology, elimin eliminating the passive area in the model, increasing the energy yield thanks to the technology of tilling ribbon and able to reach other minus 1.2% of LCOE. And this is our Let's say, um, I'm proud to say our final result of launching this product, because it's just, it, it is not just a bigger panel, but it's definitely a panel with a lot of technology inside, which allows you to reach higher goals on your investment, higher, higher R and lower LCOE. Well, then, from uh, Jinko's side, I would uh, like to say thank you. Um, from my side, it's uh, almost uh, everything. Um, I, I would like to leave now the word to you, Mark, again, for your, the other interesting uh, presentations we have. Thank you very much, uh, Roberto. Um, our next speaker, our second speaker, will be Hector Sanchez. Uh, from single axis uh, tracker company, Soltec. So uh, when you're ready, uh, Hector, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Mark, for the introduction. Um, well, thank you, Roberto, for the refreshing presentation you offered us. And I will also thank you, Jinko, and of course, Pivitech for, for the invitation to take part in this very interesting tech talk. Well, uh, well, before going to the main topic of this webinar, I would like to give you a briefing about Soltec. Uh, Soltec is a leading tracker manufacturer with more than 16 years experience. We, are, we, we have been designing, manufacturing, and installing trackers since 2004. Uh, well, we have a great team with more than 1,600 people all over the world in these 15 countries, and we have accumulated more than 10 gigabyte sales. And we have we are very proud of being the first bifacial trackers in in terms of installed capacity with more than three gigabyte projects all over the world. So we became the first tracker manufacturer in Latin America, in LATAM. 
I'm the first one in, in, in two portrait configuration in the world. So once you have a picture about Soltech, let's go directly to the topic of this presentation. Well, I entitled uh, it Soltech SF7 Tracker plus Jinko Tiger Pro boosting LCOE. And I will talk about the integration of the Jinko Tiger Pro module in our tracker and how our robust tracker is prepared and is the best choice to decrease LCOE using large area models like this Jinko Tiger Pro we are talking today. And to do so, <coughs> we will go through two main topics. The first one is the Diewin methodology we in Solte we use to calculate the structural analysis of the tracker. It is a dynamic mean analysis in tracker design. And it's a, as I said, a structural calculation methodology developed by Soltech with the support of RWDI during the last few years. And it allows us to predict the behavior of the tracker against the wind when using PV models with large sizes, as we are talking today. And the second topic I'm going to, to go through uh, it is about bifacial technology and how to make the most of bifacial using Soltech trackers combined with the Tiger Pro mode. So let's go. Well, in this, in this slide to begin with, I think it's very useful for you to understand which is the impact of this large area PV modules like the Tiger Pro. And in the left side of this slide, you can see the difference in size of the of three PV panels compared to the SWAM model, Jinko SWAM model. We can see the difference inside in size with the Tiger Pro 72 cells and the Tiger Pro, the biggest one, the 78. And when we go through the numbers, in the table in the bottom right part of this slide, compared to this one, we can see that the Tiger Pro 72 cells, uh, it, as a result, we have a tracker which is 9.45% uh, larger in terms of the width of the table. But even more, the Tiger Pro 78 we get 18% more width in the tracker table. So that's a lot. And it is a challenge that we as a tracker manufacturer, we have to deal with. So in the past, the market the standard was using the building codes to calculate the behavior of the structures, uh, but it has been proven to be insufficient. Uh, trackers are dynamic structures that move and interact with the wind. So the fluid structure interaction effects are crucial in the analysis. And in order to properly identify this physical phenomena, Soltech established uh, this collaboration with the renowned consultancy engineering firm, which is RWDI, like I said. And in this slide, I'm going to go deeper in the explanation about this methodology that we developed with RWDI. And to begin with, I would like to you all look at the bottom part of this slide. In the bottom part of the, of the slide, we can see the three mechanisms, the main three mechanisms to be considered when studying the uh, structural response of the tracker. And in the left bottom part of the slide, we can see the first mechanism, which is the resonant vibration. 
Well, the resonant vibration is quite important because it is basically, it produces a load amplification that occurs in the upwind road or the tracker field when the wind hits the first row. So what we are experiencing here is that the wind hits the first row of the tracker and then it produces a vortex of wind which increases the, the load and hit the second row. So uh, this is a phenomenon that has to be carefully studied in order to, di to, to dimension well, to design very well the structure. You, are, you can only think about the first track exposed, exposed to the stereo part of the wind, but you need to pay attention to this vortex which is produced by this resonant vibration. This is the first mechanism. And then we have the second and third mechanisms that are quite similar between them because they are related to the torsional response of the tracker and are categorized as instabilities. The torsional fracture is a oscillatory uh, mechanism that it is produced at greater tilt angles of the structures and can produce a collapse in the structure. When I talking about uh, the structure collapse, it, there are a huge variety of possible collapses from uh, one, for example, bending the modus supports of the tracker to a complete breakage of the sluing drive or a breakage of the torque tube or even the piles producing that the all the trackers fell in the ground. Uh, and then we have also the torsional galloping, which is a phenomenon driven by a lack of stiffness that occurs normally at low tilts. So torsional flutter occurs normally at greater tilts when the track is at, at a greater tilt, and then torsional galloping uh, it occurs by when when the track is at low tilts. Well. In order to identify and try to control these mechanisms, what, what a tracker manufacturer has to make, and we made it, is to perform the necessary wind tunnel tests. If we go to the pictures in the <coughs> top part of the slide, we are going like through a line time, starting on, on the left, where we perform the first rigid model pressure wind tunnel test in 2013. With this pressure wind tunnel test, well, we get the pressure load on the, the structure. That, that it is a rigid model, the target doesn't move, and we have an approximation of the dynamic amplification factors. We get some information about dynamics, but it is just an approximation. And it was the market standards, a standard since a few years ago. Uh, every tracker manufacturer in the market just had a rigid model and calculated the, the, calculated the tracker in the past using this. We identified that it was a problem because we only had an approximation about the dynamic effects. So we started this collaboration with RWDI. With RWDI, we developed the another more evolution, another new wind tunnel test, which is the sectional model. You can see in the center of the slide is the picture in the center, and in in this wind tunnel, the difference is that the tracker can move, and there are sensors in the extreme of the tracker that are collecting all the info and providing uh, this value inform information about the fluid interaction with the uh, structure, okay? So we obtain the aerodynamic derivatives from the second sectional model wind tunnel that allow accurate knowledge of the turbulence fluctuations 
uh, and the target movement. Okay, so we combine these results with the numer numerical models to obtain the fractury and buffeting analysis method that I was talking before. So, uh, but it is not only that. We have in the beginning the region model, we have the sectional model now with the tracker being able to move, but at the end, uh, a PP plan is composed of a large amount of trackers, every, every one of them moving independently. So we perform the full air elastic wind tunnel test, which is the one in the left part in the picture. We perform the, this full air elastic this year, in the beginning of this year, and we see we can identify the differences between the position of the tracker in the layout. Uh, because it is not the same that a tracker is in the exterior part of the layout because of the exposure to the wind than a tracker which is in the inner part of the layout. Okay. So with this new full air elastic wind tunnel test, we understand the interaction between all the trackers. So uh, it helped us to calibrate the CFD simulations 3D. So we do not need to perform a specific wind tunnel test for each project specification that we are studying. This DIWI methodology gives us the flexibility to predict the tracker behavior, no matter the wind speed nor the model site. That is why we are comfortable by using these large area PV panels because combining all these three wind tunnel tests with the SCFD simulations, we are able to predict if the track is going to be stable. And not only that, if the track is going to be stable and the response that the, every component of the tracker will have but when the maximum speed uh, wind speed comes. And as a result, what we get is a tailored and made design for every specific project. Depending on the wind condition of the project and on the size of the PV panel, we make uh, adaptations in the tracker design. For example, taking, bearing in mind the, the biggest PV panel we are talking here, the Tiger Pro 78, the one with almost five meters uh, width in the table, maybe we need trackers in the exterior part of the layout that are smaller to be more rigid. For example, with two strings in, instead of three strings. That's a normal adaptation that the, this methodology results other adaptations can be uh, increasing the thickness of the model rails, putting more piles per tracker. We don't have the same amount of piles per tracker for every project. It depends on the wind and on the on the uh, PV model size. So we made all these adaptations in our that tracker design in order to be completely sure that we are withstanding with the wind necessities of the project. Well, I'm bringing here uh, another challenge related to the size of this large area PV panels, which is the model mounting holes distance. It is a standard market using the 400 millimeters distance to fix the PV panels to the rails, but keeping these mounting holes at 400 millimeters augments the model cantilever, increasing the bending and, well, we see it, there is a risk of uh, having mo model micro cracks. This is a, a potential problem that may happen more to trackers in one important configuration because the cantilever is higher in these PV panels, sorry, in these, in these trackers, and than compared to, to the 2P configuration that we have. So depending on the wheel specification, uh, the mounting holes may be need to increase to the next position. For example, with the biggest PV panel and a big 
uh, uh, with a location with high wind, you may need to go from 400 to 1,100 millimeters. That increases a lot the amount of rails that you have to put in your tracker. I want to give you an example of, of that, making a comparison with, between our tracker in 2P configuration, which is the one you can see in the picture in the left, with a tracker in 1P configuration, which is in the center, okay? And then if we go to the table, we can see the numbers. We are comparing a configuration of two in portrait, two per 42 with 44 rails per tracker, compared to one in portrait tracker in configuration one per 84, and it has 86 rails. So the track, the tracker in, in one P configuration has a lot of more rails because of its uh, configuration. So if you need to length the model rail in in the PV in the in the one P track is going to be a lot more than in, in the two P tracker. So uh, what we have here is if we go from 400 millimeters to 1,100 millimeters, uh, the increase of rails in the case of two port track is going to be 24.6 percent, but in case of the 1P configuration, we can see in the right part, in the bottom part of the table, that for the 1P configuration tracker, it's going to be more than triple. It's going to be one, not, not the triple, sorry, 159% more rails than they had with the other configuration multiple. So that is really important when we are evaluating a project to pay attention to which is the wind pressure that the model can withstand with each mounting hold position. And it is specified normally by the PV model manufacturer in their uh, installation manual. So please pay attention to it carefully. Well, I, I would like to bring you here a brief analysis on LCOE. Comparing two different PV panels we, in, in our tracker, uh, one is a Tiger Pro 72 with 535 mil, uh, uh, back peak power that Marcelo was talking, uh, Roberto was talking before, compared to a market standard PV panel with 490 back. There are some parameters fixed here. It is a project condition 93.6 kilometers per hour with a 28 models per string. We can see there in, 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 the, in the points, two per 42 tracker configuration with a 12 meter pitch and a mounting hole distance of 400 millimeters. And well, we, with, this, with the Tiger Pro, we have a bigger TV panel with 4.93% more surface, but we are having much more power per tracker. We are having 9.18% more power per tracker. So even though the tracker is more expensive itself, because the PV panel is bigger, the price increase is less than the gain of power we are having because of the great density power of this new PV panel. So at the end, we are having a cost efficiency of more than 3%, 3.36% compared to the market standard PV panel. And not also the cost of the tracker. It is also the balance of parts. As we are having a much more power per tracker, we need less PV panels, less trackers, 9% less electronics and motors to be mounted, 9% less pipes, that means much less foundation work. We have 9% less occupied area, which means a lot of less grading. So combining the SF7 single axis tracker with the Dinko Tiger Pro, we have a lower LCOE. 
but it is not only about having a very reduced cost it is only about producing more energy so uh, it is so important to combine a tracker which enhances the bifacial production with a great PV model like this so the combination between the SF7 bifacial tracker with the uh, this bifacial Jinko Tiger Pro it's a, a winner combination because we are the top bifacial tracker manufacturer leader uh, because of our expertise and our knowledge about the technology we have been working for more than four years evaluating bifacial technology and we are collaborating in, in on a bifacial tracker evaluation certain center in california more uh, all outdated by Unreal and Black and Beach. And we have gotten some very good results about the comparison between our tracker in two portrait position with a uh, tracker in one portrait position. The result is that our tracker produced 2.1% more energy when talking about bifacial. And why is that? Well, it is mainly because of three parameters that we can see in the table here. Okay, the first one is the temperature. In, with our tracker, which is higher because of this configuration in tune portrait, the PV panels are cooler because of the wind speed that is uh, reaching them is higher. The wind is cooler and so it cools the PV panels. We can see in the picture in the right part, top part of this slide, we can see the color of the thermographic camera showing this cooling of the PV panels in the two port configuration compared to the one important configuration. And we can see some diagrams uh, below these pictures where in the, in the a right part of the slide where we can see how the cooling works in terms of temperature and then the second parameter it is the torque tube shading in our configuration we separate the gap in the center of the tracker to avoid shading by the torque tube we can see in, in the uh, image in the bottom part left of this slide comparing our tracker and the saddle, the one portrait configuration produces in the back part of the PV panel. So with this no shading of the torque tube, we gain 0.7%. And then there are other design details like the uh, larger pitches, uh, higher uh, of the PV panel from the ground, and other features that give us an extra 0.1%. And at the end, we are getting this 2.1%. That is why combining all the cost saving, our structural calculation methodology against the wind called DIWIN, and combining everything with the uh, adaptations that we have for the tracker for bifacial technology, with the Tiger Pro PV panel is the best combination to low your SCOE in the project. So this is all I had to say for now. I am at your disposal for the Q&A. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you there, Hector, for that uh, uh, great uh, demonstration of the uh, LCO impact uh, that the single axis trackers have, especially with the bifacial side. Um, our final speaker today uh, is uh, Ryan Jiao, and uh, he's from uh, TUV Nord. Uh, over to you, Ryan, when you're ready. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mark, for your introduction. Um, thank you, uh, Hector Roberto, for your interesting topics. Uh, and I feel very honored to be invited for this uh, uh, tech talk by Jinko Solar and PV Tech. Uh, today, I would like to share about the low LCOE promotes a successful PV projects. 
Okay, the main contents will be divided into three parts. First is the evaluation condition. Second will be the results of the evaluation. And third will be the online engineer service introduction. Okay, so the first condition is you need to choose a piece of land. So here in this case, we find uh, the location is in Guomo in Qinghai province, which is in the western part of China. The installation capacity is 120 megawatts, and you can see the GPS coordinator there. The annual irradiation is 2,195 hours. The altitude is 2,800 meters, which is much high, very high. And the ambient temperature is 6.69 degrees for the whole year. Second condition is we need to select the modules. So plan one, we choose the Jingo Tiger Pro, uh, which is uh, which is radiated power is 530 watts, and with a module efficiency of 21.4%. And we pick out another two module type from the mainstream uh, module type of the market. Uh, one is 500 watts and another is 450 watts. Okay, then you can see with the higher module efficiency, Jinko Tiger Pro requires less module amounts and also less string um, amounts. So we do the mathematics, we found out that the plan one is 5.7% less than plan two and also 50.1% less than plan three. So everybody knows that the corresponding BOS cost of plan one is also lower, which means the EPC procurement and development cost can be saved. And with these uh, benefits that for your design of the, of the, you know, the string distance can be more flexible. You can design it much larger to reduce the shadow risk and also, on the other hand, you can use less land, area of land, cutting down its lease and purchase costs. Then for the condition three is a cash flow effect and discount rate. So when you need to calculate the LCOE, so you need to calculate about the expense in the left side and the revenue in the right side. The expense is includes the CAPEX and OPEX, which are total investment, land rent, bank loads, OM cost, and tax. And for the revenue that you need, use the industry level PV cyst to simulate the energy generation. And you need a grid purchase price, which is the electricity price. And you use 5% of the residue assets uh, for the final value. And don't forget that you need a five uh, normally, it's 7% of the discount rate, which was much very fair for this calculation. Then, as you can see from the left part, is the simulation result from the January to December as a monthly basis for the energy generation. And then, in total, it's a year generation. Then, we use the uh, degradation rate of Jinko's Tiger Pro as a benchmark for 0.55% of each year to do the simulation. Then we got a very complicated equation. Okay, for the C, which is the capital of the total investments, and you find here the LT, MT, TT is the number of the year, land fee, omni fee, and the year's tax. And this uh, N is means 25 years uh, life cycle, okay? And for the R is the residential value, which is 5%. IT is the year's load interest, bank, bank uh, interest, okay? ET is the number of years generation energy and R is the discount rate. Then you can see that with the star, Jinko Tiger Pro have the lowest LCOE compare with another two. The final results is 0 0.0421 euros dollars per kilowatt hours. And in the other hand, 
when you do the internal return <coughs> rates evaluation, that you find out Jinko Taiko Pro has the highest uh, figure, which is 50%.85%. Okay, you need the cash flow for each year and 25 years as well, and the initial self investments to get these results. And you can see the other two is obviously lower than that. So with this flexibility of this gap, so you can allow in your power plan, there were certain kind of losses, which you don't expect it, that can be solved by this high efficiency module. Then we go to um, uh, the curve, the diagram, the left part is the Jinko Tiger Pro as the baseline. Okay, we found out, like you see in the middle, it's a 500 watt module type. And you find there was five aspects that was obviously higher than the baseline. The cable is 10% uh, more than Jinko's one. And the installation means that they install more modules, more racks, all of them, that is 6%. And transportation, of course, for the module is as well for more, more equipment. And also for the mounting, for the land, is three and two percent more than that and when you compare another one which was much lower uh, 450 watts that you can see this value is even much more than the middle one the cable is 70 percent and the insulation is well 70 percent transportation 10 percent mounting six percent then is three percent okay then I'm going to uh, introduce about the company. Tufnot is a top 10 certification company, and we have more than 150 years history. We have branch all of the all of the world, and the service include testing, inspection, certification, and consultancy. That from the map you can see that we did a lot of product in China, 36 gigawatt, and in Asia is 40 gigawatt because Asia is the largest installation. Uh, region in the world and in Europe, in America, we have to do more than several uh, hundred megawatts. Okay, this is a typical process of uh, a solar, solar project. And this is how we're gonna do uh, quality assurance of a PV project as the owner engineer. 5E is to help you to get a successful solar project with all these experience, uh, entire process, quality control, excellent construction. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ryan, uh, for your uh, contribution there. Um, looking at the time, uh, we're ready for the Q&A session. However, uh, as we've uh, experienced a lot of uh, questions coming through, uh, the platform will stay open so that uh, Jinko people can actually carry on uh, answering some of these questions when the webinar actually is, is over. Um, so people can stay on. We've had this before. The, although the webinar slides will disappear, actually the platform is still open so people don't have to rush off uh, they can actually try and get their questions answered before uh, the, the whole webinar closes down. So right now, um, we're going to start the Q&A. We have lots and lots of questions, people, uh, regarding uh, two sides, really, both from the, uh, the design issues related to the larger Tiger Pro modules or any larger area modules, but with obviously with the uh, design of the uh, tracker system. So I'm gonna uh, certainly have to pass uh, some of these over to both uh, Hector Sanchez and Roberto, maybe uh, partly explain uh, some of these because there's been uh, uh, genuinely a lot, of, uh, a lot of questions on this side. Um, uh, a simple one maybe to start off with, but I think uh, as well, uh, I appreciate some people actually ask some of these questions uh, before Hector got uh, deep into the LCOE metrics. But there's obviously uh, uh, a need for understanding that 
with larger modules. So this this question is. Uh, let me open with uh, San, uh, with Hector Sanchez on this first, and then perhaps Roberto can follow up. But uh, lots of commentary here about uh, the actual aspect that let's take a typical SF7 tracker. We're using Tiger Pro modules. Uh, the longer lengths, uh, the the more um, reinforcement required. Uh, the amount of uh, actual uh, rows and the stakes and strengthening of the overall increases. But what's what's your bottom line comment on this? Because it, it seems people are just fo focuses on that that initial upfront cost rather than the overall yield. So whether yeah, Hector. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Mark, for you know for sharing the the um, these questions. Well, I in my presentation I try to give you a a general picture about how we approach the design of the tracker for these Tiger Pro uh, models with very large area, and as a general idea, there is no a magic formula uh, because each track, uh, uh, sorry, each project uh, specification may produce a different tracker. That is why I took a lot of time uh, explaining the, the diary methodology we use for that. We uh, study carefully each project location according to the wind speed required and with, uh, large, with the size of the PV panel, and we made the adaptations required for the tracker to withstand to be stable, okay? So, for example, if we are talking about the Tiger Pro 72, um, we have studied in several projects here in Spain, and you get a very, very uh, cost-effective configuration with trackers in the exterior part, the one with, with what are more exposed, uh, that really works with two strings. You don't need to make it the shortest one, which would be with one string, which is less cost-effective. So, uh, but evidently, if we increase the wind speed or we, if we go to a different location in, I don't know, in, in, in other part of Spain maybe, uh, with very big PV panels, we may need shorter, even shorter trackers in the exterior part. And not only that, we may need uh, more piles per tracker or more uh, thickness in the tracker tubes. So there is no uh, unique analysis and there is no uh, an, a unique scenario of cost increase when evaluating this speed panel. It's a combination and we need to study carefully and we can do it very fast and very flexible because of this DIY methodology I presented. I don't know if I, 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 know, I know that you all want a very a specific answer, uh, but it isn't. Mark. <laughs> Mark, I can follow up. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Hector. That yeah. is excellent. Uh, I can follow up by saying that we are also flexible in our portfolio by offering, offering different configurations of the, the sizing of the models with 72, mm. with also 60 or 78 cells, because yep. as you say, every project is unique with uh, different environment conditions. So there is no a general answer, but there is a specific answer to a specific project. Mm. What, yeah, what we have, uh, what we are feeling, that we are uh, seeing uh, by studying this project with the Ginkgo Pro, is that we are finding that at the end it's more cost effective than compared to other PV panels. You know, uh, using the same the same characteristics. But this is a general idea, and it, uh, we can pull the larger PV panel in our tracker. It is only a matter of calculating it. And obviously, the greater the wind speed, the more expensive it's going to be. But it is not a technical problem. It is a matter of being cost effective. Okay, uh, Hita Sanchez, thank you. Uh, Roberto, Roberto uh, just uh, a follow up really from my side, because again, lots of questions were kind of. Uh, 
highlighting this, everybody's understanding uh, extra stresses and strains. I think Hector Sanchez is, is trying to say, hey, it, it does, it varies to the module size and everything, but there's a lot of questions about the actual reliability here, things like the potential for micro cracks, uh, you know, how do, um, even from the, uh, from the standard uh, mounting holes distance, you know, what, what, what is, what is uh, Jinko's modules able to do? Because I think, I think uh, people are treating still the, correct me if I'm wrong, people still thinking that the module is one thing, the tracker is something else, and, that, and each one must be as rigid and as strong as possible. So maybe you want to add something in there, Roberto. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, thank you, Mark. Well, first of all, uh, they have two different parts of a unique final project, so it's very important that uh, both of them are totally compatible. That is why we actively work with the uh, trackers company. And we uh, improved uh, three specific points uh, on the design. One is the frame. In order to improve the model stability, we improved the design of the frame specifically. If we move on the cell stability, I mean, I can mention two important points. One is using multi bus bus technology, which will increase the mechanical values, the stability of the cell. And on the other hand, is the connection between the cells by applying the tilling ring ribbon technology with a small overlap we're going to reinforce all the stability cell by cell. So we work on two sides, on the cell side, on the model side, in order to increase the stability. And reduce <laughs> micro tracks, of course. Okay, uh, that's good. Th thank you for that. I, I want to bring in if uh, uh, Ryan is, is here, because I think there's uh, an element that he can bring on board because, because of the LCOE dynamics, uh, again, trying to get people to understand you may have a, uh, an upfront balance of system cost uh, higher, but uh, overall it's that compelling LCOE. So, so Ryan, uh, you used, uh, uh, you used uh, Golmud in uh, Guanghai uh, province as, as your uh, PV cyst uh, modeling. What, what's special about using uh, Golmud and where does that fit in? with uh, what, we, what we've already been talking about with the upfront cost, but the, the actual gain in, in LCOE. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, Gomot is a beautiful city, but the reason we choose it is not because of its uh, beautiful theme. Uh, we choose it because Gomot in China, it belongs to region one. Well, what is the meaning of region one? Region one is in China, it means that uh, this region has the highest irradiance. So as you can see the presentation that uh, government in the whole year has 2,100 hours. Uh, so, but with such high irradiance, it means that you got the lowest feeding tariff, lowest uh, electricity price. So we believe that when, you know, the cost of the, uh, the module of the going low and down, we believe that the lower uh, uh, great connection uh, electricity price will be more sensitive. So that's why we choose it. A uh, second reason is that uh, Gormut is a very good place to install modules. So they have a lot of uh, PV, power, PV power plants over there. So we think this site was, you know, uh, was, uh, um, it was the investment cho investor's choice. So we think it might be a good idea. Okay, Ryan, uh, thank you very much for that. Um, <coughs> back a little bit to, to where we were, because again, this is a, 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 big, a big aspect here of all the questions that are, have come in. Um, I wanted to try and summarize a few here. Uh, the, what, one, of the, one of the points made there was, uh, we've, got a, we've got the wafer, air, larger wafers, we're getting uh, different module dimensions because of the, as we said here, the 78, 72, others are going 66. So there's a broad range of module, larger module diameters. Um, what uh, I guess people are thinking here is, uh, that's, a, that's a big transition going on. Can, could, Roberta, could just 
out, just re, re, uh, reaffirm to people uh, where we are with like the Tiger series to then the Tiger Pro and also uh, when the Tiger Pro itself will actually be made available in, uh, in major markets. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, actually, I mean, uh, the last news I received today is that we are starting the production uh, in August and uh, in September we will uh, deliver the first Tiger Pro Series panels to the market. Also in September, we will uh, finalize completely all the set of the certifications required and uh, all the documentation like uh, third party palm files and uh, installation manual will be ready by the end of this month. Okay, thank, thank you, Hector. Uh, uh, sorry, Roberto. Uh, Hector Sanchez, um, they're not implicit in, uh, in your detailed uh, presentation, but uh, there's a couple of questions uh, yeah. here. One is, uh, obviously, you have this uh, sort of uh, talking effect, you know, sort of going from one module over to the next um uh, which is creating stress from the front front uh, uh string to the second um we've had people ask as well about uh using like the tiger pro so these much larger area uh modules for applications such as uh, floating solar and if you look at the layouts of those although they're not tracking uh at the moment uh it seems to me uh, i don't know if you've done any analysis on this but it seems to me there, there may be challenges uh, that need to be looked at uh, when using large area for say uh, for uh, floating solar and I know the initial wave uh, several gigawatts uh, typically have used sort of standard 60 cell uh, 156 mm -hmm. you know modules I didn't know what you you've got any comments to make on that well we are talking about floating systems right mm. yes well uh, for, in, in, from my point of view, there, there's no any difference by analyzing uh, a floating system or a ground mounting system in terms of wind speed and wind behavior. Of course, if you are on a location, uh, you need to be careful by the calculation methodology in terms of applying the correct coefficients depending on the terrain topography. There are several coefficients that may to be considered. Uh, for example, if, if it's a totally wide area without any tree, you need to implement uh, a specific coefficient to for in the calculation. But this is the same if you are on a desert without trees. So in terms of a uh, floating or not floating system, uh, I'm not identifying any difference in the uh, structural calculation. So the explanation about the dye when I, 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 I have, I, I bring you here, it, it will be yeah. totally applicable. And I'm not seeing any difference. I don't, I don't know if you are uh, identifying something special here, Mark, about yeah. floating or not floating. Uh, no, I think, I, think, uh, I think it's just the people are, are driving down the LCOE of uh, floating solar just as hard as, uh, uh, you know, as, as land well, there's, a, there's a challenge uh, about putting yeah. trackers in the floating system. It yeah. is. There's a tot there, there's totally a challenge because of the foundation, uh, mainly, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it is something very, uh, well, you know, this is so, it's as a critical point in terms of the tracker, and it is a challenge. I would say, yeah, if you have a larger PV panel, you will have more loads in terms of the pies and so on so the fundus is something critical that needs to be carefully studied okay i appreciate yeah. that um looking at the time uh we've i know we've run over a bit but i think it's just, just been uh really excellent uh while i've got you there uh uh hector one one thing uh that uh, again had cropped up uh, or is inference in in some of this um with all of this analysis that you've done uh, with Die Wind, um, what is a? I know typically uh, or historically, people would 
uh, in high winds would lock the uh, tracker system in the full vertical plane. But but is there any, is there is that still the same same thing to do with these large area modules, or, or what's changed? Do you mean putting the tracker in the safe position? Yes. Well, yeah, it, the, the approach doesn't vary. It, it, it doesn't change depending on the, on, the, uh, on the size of the PV panel because the, the, the dynamic analysis, uh, it is the same, the properties of the wind, the behavior. So no matter the wind or the, the wind speed or, or, the PV, or the PV model size, our methodology has a study all the components on all the factors. So uh, we have different stove positions strategies in our methodology, depending on the wind, on depending on the tracker side. But normally we put the tracker in 45 degrees against the wind. So uh, we are totally stable when the maximum wind speed comes. In our tracking design, you will find most of the times that the track is gonna be safe and stable with the maximum wind speed at 45 degrees. And with this Tiger Pro PV pan is gonna be the same. Okay, thank you there. Um, just a quick one, final one for, uh, for Roberto, uh, just very short answer if you can. Um, the, from, a, from a perspective of, uh, 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 on the bifacial side, um, uh, obviously you get people asking all the time, which which is better? Uh, is it a glass glass module or a glass transparent? Uh, can you sort of just give us a quick sum up of of how you how you look at uh, these two t uh, these two options? Yes, sure. Well, I mean, uh, it's um, a different component. I mean, having a, a dual glass or a transparent bake sheet. There, there are advantages and disadvantages depending on the project. Uh, of course, I can say that having a transparent bake sheet, uh, it's somehow convenient because you have a standard panel where the weight is uh, between seven and 10 kilograms less than a dual glass. So of course it's a big advantage when it comes for, to specific uh, um, handling the panels on site uh, or for commercial on the rooftop. Uh, on the other hand, dual glass, uh, uh, we strongly suggest dual glass for very specific uh, locations like floating system or uh, very aggressive environments. So I will say that there is um, a complex matrix where we can um, describe the two materials and uh, having a final result. I mean, in, in general, I will say transparent back sheet is the best option, but of course we need to evaluate case by case. Um, I, I will suggest our um, audience to check our uh, report where we compared technically the, um, the two uh, products and uh, we describe with an accuracy uh, all the um, advantages and disadvantages of these two materials. Okay, uh, good, good answer, thank you, Roberto. And thank you again uh, for your presentation and being on the Q&A. Hector Sanchez, thank you very much for yours. And Ryan, uh, uh, excellent uh, presentation as well. And I hope, uh, although some of the questions went more into the actual design and build analysis uh, using large area modules with with trackers i think that's a uh, fully understandable for a lot of people but it's interesting that people are, are disconnecting uh, that the upfront cost to the overall lcoe uh, is different so yes you can have there can be more costs involved in the upfront capital cost but the lcoe is pretty compelling uh, Thank you everyone uh, who's been attending. Again, you don't have to rush off when, uh, when this now webinar finishes. Uh, people are here to answer any more questions. I think uh, uh, there's still questions coming, a few questions coming in. But thank you again, everybody, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Goodbye.